Hello, my name is Liz Toombs. I'm an MA student in Native Literature out of the University of Oklahoma. I'm sitting here with Mr. John Lovett, curator of the Western History Collections. Hi, John, how are you? Good, good. thank you. Good, good. I, I was wondering if you could talk with me a little bit about the Western History Collections. Absolutely, the Western History Collections uh, which is one of the uh, premier collections uh, at the University of Oklahoma within the special collections category. And for uh, overall, it's one of the top five uh, in the United States for the study of the American West and the American Indian. S the collection started in 1927. Uh, Edward Everett Dale, a, a, a failed rancher in uh, southwestern Oklahoma who decided to come back to college. He uh, came to OU, graduated from Harvard, and with a grant from Frank Phillips, uh, he started collecting materials that supported his uh, graduate students who were interested in, uh, of course, doing research in the American West and the American Indian. Uh, rare books, uh, probably about 80,000 or so uh, rare books here. Uh, and so many of those are uh, out of print. We have uh, probably two million uh, historic photographs uh, they cover uh, oh, so, so many uh, areas in Western history and, and uh, American Indian history. The largest collection of photographs, of course, is the uh, Cherokee uh, tribe. Then, of course, we could branch out into some of the smaller tribes, Sac and Fox, uh, probably a couple hundred photographs. But again, it's, uh, there's, it seems that our photographs are, are used uh, continuously by production companies that are doing things on the American West and the American Indian. We work with uh, A&E, Discovery Channel, History Channel, Learning Channel, ABC, PBS, just a wide, wide range of production companies. We have several thousand linear feet of uh, unpublished material or primary resources. Those have, been, have become very popular recently in the last uh, year or two with uh, so many uh, uh, professors focusing uh, on their students uh, using primary resources uh, for their papers. For the Native Peoples or the American Indian Collection, probably our, our largest uh, collection is the uh, Wilma Mankiller papers. Those, those came to the university uh, a number of years ago, and it's kind of interesting too because uh, we uh, contacted her when, uh, uh, about her papers, and they were just uh, uh, stored in her garage. So that was, that was an excellent collection that, that came in that complemented the uh, Cherokee Nation papers that uh, Edward Everett Dale brought in in the uh, late 1920s. So there's, uh, that's, that's kind of exciting to have those papers and also have Wilma Mankiller's papers. So the other large one is uh, Green McCurtain, who was uh, primary chief uh, with the uh, Choctaw Nation. Those, those papers are here, and then a number of uh, smaller collections. Uh, for, the, for the northern tribes, though, uh, uh, one of the, I think the most interesting collections is the Walter Campbell collection. He wrote under the name of uh, Stanley Vestal. He, he went to the uh, Dakotas in the uh, late 1920s, early 1930s. He interviewed so many of the uh, older warriors that had fought throughout the uh, Indian Wars. One of the uh, best sets of uh, interview notebooks is when he interviewed uh, Chief Joseph White Bull. And White Bull bought, uh, fought throughout the uh, Indian Wars, uh, fought at uh, the Fetterman fight, uh, Wagon Box, uh, Little Bighorn, the Battle of the Rosebud. Mm -hmm. So having his, uh, his research material here, plus he also drew a, a wonderful set of uh, ledger drawings. Uh, of course, ledger drawings are usually are, are the, there's two main things that focus on ledger drawings, uh, uh, horse capture and individual battle scenes. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we, we have those uh, on display right now uh, as part of uh, our American Indian art exhibit. But uh, the manuscripts collections, uh, they're uh, used, uh, we have researchers that travel uh, all over uh, the, from the United States, Europe, Asia to use those collections. We're also digitizing so many of those key collections to make, make them more accessible to researchers. Now, not to say we're trying to drive researchers away, but it seems like the more things that we digitize and um, make available online mm -hmm. brings more researchers here. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's, that's, of course, our main mission, of course, is to support the University of Oklahoma students, faculty, and staff uh, and then also uh, those researchers that uh, travel here uh, for that material. 
Uh, sound recordings, we have uh, probably our best sound recording collection is the uh, old Indians for Indian Hour program that was here at the university. Uh, Don Whistler, Sack and Fox, uh, it's always, it was always interesting because he'd started out, we're gonna listen to some old time Indian music. But that's also an important uh, uh, collection because so many of those songs are two and three generations separated uh, from folks today. Mm -hmm. And the, the tribes, tribal members will buy that, that material uh, and capture those songs that uh, they were singing on that, on that radio program. Mm -hmm. So uh, map, map collections, we have several thousand maps that uh, we just recently uh, purchased uh, uh, four uh, campaign maps uh, from the uh, 1870s that were uh, fortunately or unfortunately given, <laughs> given to the uh, United States Cavalry as they were trying to, uh, during that period, trying to drive in uh, uh, Quanta Parker and his last band of uh, Comanches. Mm -hmm. But back to photographs, I think one of the most interesting photograph collections that we have, uh, Dale brought in in 1927. It was a set of 700 glass plate negatives that were made by Annette Ross Hume. When she and her husband uh, came to the Anadarko Agency, which is south of here, uh, she, he was the agency physician, and she brought with her one of the camera kits that were being marketed to women at that time, not for commercial use, but for a uh, uh, oh, uh, hobby. Mm -hmm. And uh, she photographed at the Anadarko Agency some of the legendary warriors uh, Quanta Parker, Comanche War Chief, uh, when uh, Geronimo's uh, group came back from Florida, she had access to uh, him and photographed him, along with just every the everyday life there at the agency as the tribes were making that transition from the horse culture to the reservation to the uh, later allotment period. So those, and it's, it's interesting too, because we would have uh, oh, uh, uh, tribal members come in go through those photographs for us and say, you know, you know that's my grandfather. Mm -hmm. the, the most interesting group though was several years ago, a large group of Comanche elders came here and they went through the Comanche photographs for us and they were able to identify uh, a large number of, of uh, individuals that we did not have identified in that collection. So the, the Western History Collections, uh, uh, of course I could, I could go on and on for hours about the things that are here, but uh, as a resource uh, for uh, the university community and for the tribes of Oklahoma and the Southwest and the Northern, Northern Plains, it, it is one of those unique treasures that belongs to Oklahoma. I agree, I agree. I know I spend a lot of my time doing research for my papers here and I really appreciate you taking the time to talk with me about all the different collections and resources available to students and even just independent researchers. So thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah.